Good evening all. We are we are now live. Uh, I haven't gone live in a while, but that's not because I've been lazy. I have been very, very busy, and I'm going to tell you uh, what I, we, um, a whole community has been particularly busy with over the past few months. So um, are you aware of the Bylines Network? You might be aware of Byline TV and Byline Times or Byline Festival, but the Bylines Network is now a collection of eight regional online papers that we run, and they are Yorkshire Bylines, Northeast Bylines, Central Bylines, which is the Midlands, East Anglia Bylines, West England Bylines, West Country Bylines, Sussex Bylines, and Kent Bylines. Uh, we still have other areas to cover in, but essentially, this is what we have been nurturing since 2020, January 2020, was the um, initial idea and genesis of it, and it's just been going all the way since. And, and the big news now is that it is no longer a project of March for Change, as one of the various projects that we've been running there. We have spun it out as its own legal entity, as its own not-for-profit organization, with Peter Dukes of Byline Times as one of the co-directors. And so we are now properly launching it as um, that, that media entity, that publishing entity that is running all of those regional publications. And these regional publications now have monthly um, millions of impressions slash posts across Twitter and Facebook um, and between them hundreds of thousands of reads every month. So I think the total in total reads altogether um, over the last year has been something like five million. Um, so we're doing really, really well on that front and now have set that up as its own thing. I've put in the in the description link so it'll be there on the on the facebook or or down in the in the more on the youtube version of this because this is going across various channels you will be able to see on that page um the different uh bylines that exist and be able to click through to them and read them and all the rest but i want to tell you a little bit about them because there's so much fun to be had there and so much that we can do um, Hertfordshire, someone says, hmm, okay, yes, we've got Sussex and um, Hertfordshire, oh God, I've got to remember where all the bloody counties are now. I don't think quite fits within any of them uh, yet, but it's a patchwork thing and we're filling in the gaps. We've got a lot of people asking about the Northwest. Yes, that's in progress. Um, for Scotland, um, yes, we've kind of even even bookmarked the URLs for that and Wales, but we have to grow this at such a pace that we don't become overextended because each time we set one up, you know, it's a whole team that we need to be able to back, manage, promote what they're doing, give them the training, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a work in progress, but after just a year, we've already got eight regional publications going. So someone else I'm seeing asking bylines, um, Scotland, yes, that's on the way. Dorset, Dorset is part of West Country bylines because that's Cornwall, Devon, Dorset and Somerset. My geography has really dramatically improved um, over the last uh, few years. But anyway, so what we're doing here is in each one of those regions, we're really promoting citizen journalism. So the ethos is of course, progressive internationalists, we're pro-European um, in, in flavor, and we talk about issues local in terms of local democracy and holding local power to account, but also national power to account and international views, such as Yorkshire's relationship with Europe or um, misbehavior by MPs or local councils down in the West Country. And so it's the mechanism by which all the different communities that we've built up over the last few years have been able to have another layer of expression on top of the, you know, the Facebook groups and, and the Twitter groups and, you know, the gathering up for other local actions. It's actually grown up all of these local papers. But wait, there's more, as they say in infomercials, because what we're also starting to do now, oh, that focus has gone a bit weird. What we're also starting to do now um, is get students 
from universities involved. Um, so we've done like over 20 official placements now for students, journalism students, with uh, one or other of, of our bylines. And we've actually hired um, uh, uh, several of them now into part-time roles and what we're doing. So we're actually starting to pick out some of the better new generation coming through and weave that into uh, what we're doing and connect them up with opportunities with uh, whether it be campaigning groups like uh, uh, the citizens or whether it be um, we want to in future set them up with opportunities with byline times, byline investigates, byline TVs uh, and so forth and so on. So the idea is that, that not only are we getting that local representation in all those different regions, but also um, we're trying to find the next generation, nurture them, connect them, train them up, and then hopefully in the years to come, we will have that next layer of journalists that we've properly helped out, train them up in uh, the tools of the trade, investigative journalism, all the rest and so forth and so on. So it's been really good fun. Um, and I just wanted to show you that page. What I've shared on, on Twitter and, and kept pushing it is that map that you'll see on that page of the regions we've got covered. Um, and I've pushed that once or twice on Facebook and I'll push it a lot more. And yes, I will be asking for, for monthly donations um, for that so that we can strengthen up that, but it's gonna get grant money and, and other support in as well. But essentially we've got a really, really good engine here, which is like a platform that lets these different uh, local journalistic enterprises exist. And if you want to get involved as an editor, or if you want to get involved with writing articles, then it's easy to do. You just get, you just write an email to editor at xbylines.co.uk. And it's very much that community thing, community expression thing. So of course, there's lots of stories about damage that Brexit is doing locally. Uh, lots on local environmental issues. I think we want to do more on, on um, mental health issues, but certainly lots of local democracy issues, such as local MPs and such as local councils. Um, and it's a really powerful um, tool by which we get to um, get involved with democracy at that level and have that say uh, on that level. So I wanted you to be all aware of that because sometimes you may have come across you know i will post on and this this video is going out to uh people's nhs scientists for eu my own personal channel that's going on to um uh, youtube as well um you may have come across um yorkshire bylines or, or west country bylines but i wanted to make you aware of the whole network that has been growing and the fact that it is going to grow more and the fact that it's now taken a step up not just in terms of being a legal entity, but the partnerships that we've forged to do that. And the fact that it's stably pulling in such big traffic month after month after month. So um, this is what we have been busy um, with uh, a lot of the time. And um, it's just a fantastic new thing that I thought I'd tell you about on, on a Friday evening after I finished watching Byline TV. So um, please do get onto that page. If you want to write, if you want to get involved, do. Um, if you'd like to donate, please do, because you know monthly uh, backers are absolutely so helpful on this front. It's just, it's just what oils your ability to do anything these days. And you can be a monthly donor for like the entire network, or you can say, oh, that's my local one. I'd like to help that out specifically. Um, and I think hopefully as COVID starts going away, we'll be able to start linking this up with more um, local events as well. So we'll be doing online events, but also want to be doing more actual physical, real world, local events and being able to promote those um, via the, this, the set of publications that we now have as a community. So, um, and it's fun you know there's there's just so much we we can do with this now um and it's clearly the right way to go i mean the big a big thread that's coming through a lot of this is people want 
progressive alliances. They want that cross-party working. And where that is already working is actually on the local level. So documenting that and getting involved with that, telling the stories about that, uh, and building up the local histories of that is all dead important. And you can only do that properly when you've got local teams and you've got your own local media in order to be able to do that. And uh, there's, there's a podcast associated with the Bylines Network, and that should soon be working with um, uh, Bylines Radio, which may well come along soon, Byline Radio. So keep your eyes open for that one. But it's it's all growing and it's all developing. And for me, it's all giving, um, you know, what we've built over the last like five years in terms of our, like our ecosystem of uh, philosophy and community and support, which is broadly sort of like anti-Brexit, pro-environmentalism, um, pro-collaboration, pro-better quality of life and, and uh, pro sort of um, democratic involvement of the, of the citizenry in pushing for all of these. So being able to build that into um, uh, the thing that we have, I think is really good fun. So I will I will zip it there. I've been prattling again. I can see lots of questions uh, coming in. Mike is back, indeed I am. Um, and uh, who else said something along? Yes, 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 in, in, indeed, um, it is fun. Hello from Germany, very good to have you with us. Um, Oh, and I should say that one of the, the things of, of the local journalism is usually with the local journalism, they talk about their, their town or their town only, whereas this is kind of like with Yorkshire bylines, for example, the view from Yorkshire, you know, the view of our community in Yorkshire on matters concerning Yorkshire, concerning the nation, and also the view on, on Europe and the view on the world and the links of, of Yorkshire with all of that. It's just a bit more expansive than just turning a handle on, on local news. It's the values-based worldview from that community. So um, what we want to do is, um, you know, hello to Germany from us. We need to have that outreach. We need to be telling the stories about what's going on elsewhere in France and, and Germany and the Netherlands or and uh, in, in, in terms of what we like that's going on there and we would want to copy, what we're seeing in the world around us and want to build locally. Um, someone says, is London covered? No, uh, London is going to be last um, because we wanted to start with northeastern and, and Yorkshire, you know, sort of red wall areas where our local communities were not getting proper representation and so that has been our priority to go for those regions that we felt were less strong. So we've got East Anglia, but we don't have London and we don't have Manchester, right? So those have been our priorities to set up there. But eventually, at the end of the day, we do want, you know, coverage of, of everywhere in the UK. Uh, Byline TV and radio is very good. Yeah, Byline TV is... Um, really really good fun i like what um we've been doing there a lot um i don't know if any of you watched it tonight if you go to youtube you, you can watch back um it was really interesting to have kate chemarani's son um uh on um this time and, and a lot of what we've been uh focusing on is that cross learning between cultures you know people that have been on the other side of the fence um because you know she is the famous anti-vaxxer and her son has been calling her out on that so just listening to him you know talk that through and then sit next to Kaylin robertson who was part of the far right but now is actually working for byline tv and have them sitting together and comparing notes on that that's fascinating stuff and, it, and it's that insightful conversation that I'm not really seeing anywhere else. So yeah, I mean, and I I want us to be able to, you know, as the whole byline media universe of byline times, byline festival, the different regional bylines, byline TV, actually um, provide that better quality conversation 
that not only expresses our philosophy, but also can reach across and incorporate and play with um, lots of other sides of the fence and, and meld it all together in something that has deep and genuine credibility and, and is actually constructive. Um, I don't understand why everyone doesn't want this. Well, Simon, not everyone knows about this. So that is why it is the job of yourself and myself to go out and proselytize um, what this is all about. Uh, well, nice to be back. Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I needed a bit of a break because I've been doing videos since, what, 2015? Um, and sometimes, you, I, I just don't want to slip into that trap of being just a constant sort of commentator. I want to, um, you know, at the same time, also be building the things that I believe in. And so sometimes that takes going away and just working with others and raising the finances and doing the legals and, you know, hiring people and putting together the teams and making sure things work. It takes a lot of sort of nuts and bolts just to make sure that um, you, you can build things as well. Because, I mean, you can, you can sit around and, and you can be, you know, a commentator if you've got a platform you can be a commentator until you die in day just as you as a solo person um, and there are other people who are campaigners who are great at building stuff but they don't go out and express themselves and I just wanted to do both and sometimes you need to take a bit of a break from one in order to focus on the other um, but yes I mean in the long run nothing's going to stop me from mouthing off is it um, but I think that we've built something now that I think is in a really, really good place. And I also want to get back to doing more with Byline TV because I was doing all the science and politics stuff that, you know, I've, I've had a bit of a break from. But I want to get back to doing that as well and pulling in more guests that, that start reflecting all of that, too. So, yeah, tons to do. Um, oh, yeah. So, Adam, good to see you again. So, Adam is is dutifully here giving the update on where we are um correct 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 yeah you've got the lot very good cheers adam and there people is is your information about where where the network lies um welcome from edinburgh yes uh, we we've flirted with byline scotland um we didn't know if we were going to have any position whatsoever on like issues like independence and so forth and so on. I don't think we want to be pushy on anything like that. Um, but that's one that is sort of like floated um, on the side in the works. Um, let's see some other comments. And indeed, you may be a part of this, dear, dear Simon. Um, the whole point is that um, um, it is us building an engine so that people in their local places can get involved and can be part of editorial teams, social media teams, tech teams, writing articles themselves and getting stuck into the whole thing and, and, and hopefully, you know, events further down the line. So I don't know where you live, Simon, but please uh, find your closest one and, and, you know, get involved. So follow the link and, um, yeah, uh, get involved. Just found you on Twitter. Who me? Uh, follow. Um, I, <laughs> I'm just clicking on these now. I'm, I'm not selecting them up front. Thank you very much. Um, can we have a republic? I don't know. Right now, let me. Um, oh, that's. Do you need to be on panel shows, not just solo? Um, yeah, I'd be up for that, but. In order to go and do that, you kind of need um, an agent to go and promote you and all of that kind of jazz. And I've just got too much going on with what I'm trying to run here at the moment to um, to focus too much on that. I guess I should push it at some stage, but my priority is, has been the community building. You know, um, there's, there's just more fun in that. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, I see Cummings has been quoting you a lot in his tweets. How do you feel about that? He hasn't, he hasn't been quoting me um, enough. Um, I, I retweeted uh, something which was quite um, a strong a view from Jenny Russell about 
how the EU had actually kept the UK propped up on so many fronts. And he decided to say these, you know, remainer types, yada, 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 and have a blast at that. Um, I asked him um, questions about science, actually, in a long, long thread, and he never got back to me on that which I thought was a little bit chicken of him because this is meant to be his great love. And he made a statement about, you know, how this had been Vote Leave's priority. And he was prepared to have a crash out Brexit so that he could get on to the priority or Vote Leave's priority of science. And to which I said, right, you do realize that you're saying for the sake of science, you would have engaged in a measure which would have utterly trashed science because X, Y, Z, and all the rest. Is that what you meant? And he, and he didn't get back to me on that one, which I was annoyed about because I did phrase it all very um, respectfully. I think what I want to do um, at this stage is actually do some more writing myself and actually get a lot of philosophies written down in terms of science and what this country needs. A lot more of the positive stuff because it's very, very easy to whinge and whine at Brexit and what this government is doing wrong. Um, but I think that you do need to set up as an alternative what things should look like. Um, and so I should actually do from Scientists for EU, um, you know, a series of blogs on what needs to happen with the youth in science and next generations um, coming through, or how we do engage and work with other countries, or what should happen with um, open uh, publications and open data and how that gets shared. I honestly think government should be funding public science being available to the public. I think the publisher model is absolutely broken. And I think in an age where a lot of us want to get more involved, those outside science want to get involved with science and actually read academic papers. And that's coming into our cultural bloodstream. I think that needs to be available to people. And I think it's mad that the likes of some of the, the larger publications should be uh, fleecing the scientific uh, community in order to publish their stuff and then restrict it uh, from uh, so much of the public that would want to see it. So I've got a lot of stuff to say in that area and I, I think I have actually neglected my writing of late, so I, I want to do more on that. And um, to be honest, I think um, the likes of Dominic Cummings uh, and others um, who do love science genuinely and, and, and deeply, I think that is going to be more effective at building something that they can appreciate and respect rather than like me sitting on Twitter and mouthing off and, and trolling people. Um, I do think actually being constructive and, and building something there is, is you know, probably a, a, a smart way to go at the moment. Um, right, what else are people saying? Get involved with what? Did I miss something? Yes, you did, Cheryl. So. Uh, we have a new network. Oh, well, it's it's just over a year old, but it's just become official in its own legal entity now, the Bylines Network of Local Citizen Journalism right around this country, which allows all of our communities to get involved in their local area and writing articles for the local area, or getting involved in the editorial process. Um, and we've got Yorkshire bylines, Northeast bylines, Central bylines, that's, that's Midlands, East Anglia bylines, West England bylines, West Country bylines, Sussex bylines, Kent bylines, and there will be more coming online. And this is very closely affiliated with Byline Times, Byline TV, and it's all about um, the same fundamental philosophies of, of quality information, holding government and governance to account on local and national levels, and it is very much pro-European, pro-internationalist in flavour. Uh, it's, um, it's about prioritising all of those, you know, core values that we have on the progressive side. We want a progressive alliance. We want to tackle climate change. We want to maintain quality standards in, uh, in our food and in our um, treatment of animals and way of life. So it's, it's all about giving voice 
to all of those um, uh, of our community, but in situ and representing their region. That's what it's about. And you will see in the link, a link through to the main page that, that takes you there um, and shows you um, where they are on the map and lets you click through to those actual publications. And as I was saying before, month on month, we have um, a few million impressions um, and, and views across uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram, but also um, hundreds of thousands of article reads from uh, those, eight, those eight different um, publications put together. Um, so go and check it out and do go and get involved because it's just fun. It, it, you know, it's, it's our own local media teams that, that we're building up. Um, so, uh, right, lots of comments here. Shall I pop some others up? Why not? Uh, great point about science publication process. Yeah, um, I, I really do think that um, the extra leverage now is not just a, about availability to scientists. I think that we are now in an era where where science is coming into public culture. It's, it's not just because of coronavirus, um, but coronavirus has been an accelerant on that. But more people do actually genuinely want to do their own research, understand how to do their own research online. And so they should have access to academic papers. And um, I think that openness of science publication is something that we, the scientists and public together, need to advocate together uh, for mutual benefit because I think um, that it's it's just healthy. It's, it's what needs to happen. Um, right. Um, do, 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 I'm, I'm skimming through comments. Any bylines Merseyside? Right. Um, I have thought about this, whether to have a bylines Northwest or whether to do bylines Lancashire and bylines Merseyside and Greater Manchester, I don't know. Um, I think probably start with with the uh, with the northwest, um, and um, but that's in the pipeline. We will get there. If you are interested, um, then you should um, email either editor at northwestbylines.co.uk i think we've already got that set up because we're working on it or email louise at bylinesnetworks.co.uk um, and um, if you're from that area and you want to get um, involved with with the development and launch of that whenever it happens but yeah we i mean we've got this all in the works we've got it all coming through obviously we need enough capacity in the center to be able to serve all these different publications um and you know help them all out make sure there's a core team there for them um and so we've got to be careful that we don't overreach too early i've seen that happen with with lots of enterprises um but yeah we will get there cool um Yes, tell me about it. I mean, I, I wrote um, I wrote this article for um, Science Magazine about, you know, where does UK science go after Brexit? And I can't access it now. And I don't have my own copy. I think, I, I think it's somewhere on my other computer. So when you can't even access your own articles that you've written, you just think, this is nuts. Um, it was meant to be written for, for a wide audience, and then if you can't even get it yourself, it, it's absolutely nuts. So um, I think that um, what um, I need to do from scientists for e EU um, is actually start trying to nurture and open up those conversations as well, which is about, you know, the science interest and the public interest combined now in what we want from science in the public. Um, you are not byline simply an advocate i don't know who you're talking to but as for me i'm actually um a director of uh, the new bylines networks limited company which is myself louise horton peter jukes and stephen colgrave and we are the four directors 
on that enterprise. And that actually is a different legal entity from Byline Times, a different, you know, entity still from Bylines Investigates and from Byline TV. Um, so it's it's a that's my relationship with the Bylines Networks. I'm a director of it. Um, but then that sits as is sort of siblings of the other byline slash bylines entities out there. Uh, so full disclosure there. Um, aha, Dominic Jackson was a contact I had for North uh, West. Yeah, that that sounds about um, right. Good. Right. <laughs> I just clicked on that for fun. Thank you very much. Um, but that would mean getting involved with the political party first. And boy, um, I think I've got enough gray hairs or, or already. Um, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up there now for this evening. But I would encourage you all to click through on that site, have a look at the little map, have a look at the articles there, have a look at the links through to the different bylines. Um, go and enjoy it. Do support it um, either by um, uh, becoming a, a regular donor, making a one-off donation. Or be, or get involved with writing articles, or get involved with um, any of the other work they want to do. Because there's video journalism, there's there's podcast stuff. There, we need editors all the time to be revising other people's articles. There's a ton of ways that you can either um, support um, or or get involved. And make sure that you you at least subscribe uh, to one or more of them, so that you get the emails, um, so that you get you know the push notifications when the articles come up all of that get involved get stuck in help me nurture the community that would be massively appreciated thank you very much and and good night